we have seen what uh, what Newton did as uh, as a young mathematician, but uh, how Newton conceived of himself as a mathematical author. What did he think about his place in the history of mathematics? This is a very complex question, and um, there is not an easy answer. We have to follow Newton's intellectual biography, and uh, we have to uh, distinguish, try to distinguish, several periods of Newton's life as a mathematician. When he was young, I would say until the mid-1670s, uh, he inscribed himself with pride in the genealogy of modern mathematicians who were practicing the new analysis that uh, uh, enable mathematicians to overcome the limitations of Cartesian algebra via the use of infinitesimals and infinite series. But at the mid of the 70s, Newton began reading the works of ancient geometers, of Greek mathematicians. He read Apollonius, but he read especially the work of a late Alexandrian mathematician, Papus, who was active in between the 3rd and the 4th century AD. And uh, Papus was a compiler, if you like. He wrote a work in eight books, of which seven are extant, entitled the Mathematical Collections, right? And uh, this is uh, a work where Papus uh, provided uh, a summary of the results obtained by Euclid, Heron, Archimedes, Apollonius, and so on and so forth. In the seventh book, of Papus collections, Papus dealt with a method of analysis and synthesis, a method of discovery that the ancients possessed and that allowed them to make important discoveries. Many, okay, um, Papus collections were published in 1588. Now, many mathematicians who approached Papus' work were interested in discovering what this method of discovery of the ancients was. Somebody thought that algebra was the method that the ancients had at their disposal, but others thought that the ancients had a geometrical method of discovery. And Newton, in the 1670s, began believing that the ancients possessed a method of discovery superior, more aesthetically rewarding compared to the method of the moderns. But this is not the old story. In the 1670s, Newton encountered also the work by Huygens, the Orologium Oscillatorium, which landed on his table in 1673. Huygens sent him a complimentary copy. And this work must have impressed Newton greatly. Huygens was doing cutting-edge research in the field of natural philosophy without the use of a single equation. You open his book, it's all geometry. And uh, Newton must have been impressed by this uh, uh, greatly, indeed. Um, as, I, as I told you, Newton, in the mid-1670s, began to distance himself from modern mathematics. This is uh, a strange thing, if you think, because he was so good in developing new techniques.
and he had achieved uh, such uh, important results. But as I said, uh, Newton began reading ancient uh, geometry, and he met Huygens' work, and this led him to change his approach to the methods that a mathematician should uh, deploy. Um, another important event in Newton's biography in the 1670s is the polemic uh, concerning the new theory of light. And you might ask me, why is uh, Newton's optics and Newton's new theory of light important for his development as a mathematician? Now, the answer to this question is that when Newton presented his theory of colors in 1672 to the Royal Society, he positioned himself as a natural philosopher who could inject certainty into natural philosophy and overcome the uncertainty and probabilities that characterized the Baconian natural philosophy practiced at the Royal, at the, at the Royal Society. Um, at the Royal Society, many uh, people uh, Hook, in his Micrographia, for instance, defended the idea that uh, a natural philosopher can reach only conjectures and probabilities. Now, Newton believed that uh, a natural philosopher who knows how to use mathematics can achieve more than that. So, Newton was asking mathematics to be a language that allows you to frame your theories about natural philosophy in ways that go beyond the uncertainty and probabilities of other natural philosophers of his time. And I believe that this led Newton to look with some anxiety to the uh, useful discoveries in the method of series and fluxions that he had developed. Indeed, in this new analysis, in these new methods that Newton developed, there are many things that appear more like heuristic methods than as uh, certain uh, well-grounded results. The work of Greek geometers was a model of geometrical certainty, so to speak, whereas the method of series and fluxions was certainly very powerful, but it was based on techniques that were disputable. And why were these techniques disputable? Because in uh, Newton's early discoveries, you find infinite series. The binomial theorem for fractional exponents is an infinite series. So you have many uh, terms, you have an infinite number of terms, and you have to sum all these terms. What is it? I can understand what a finite sum of terms is, but uh, it's difficult to understand what an infinite sum of terms can be. Now, why were infinite series important for Newton in his early mathematics? They were important because they allowed him to solve the problem of quadratures. The area of curvilinear figures, the area bounded by curves, is not always given by a finite sum of terms. In most cases, you have to 
make recourse to an infinite series. That's what happens, for instance, with the area bounded by an hyperbola. If you have an hyperbola and you want to calculate the area of the surface bounded by the hyperbola, what you can do is to apply the binomial theorem, but uh, by applying the binomial theorem what you get is an infinite series, uh, a series of an infinite number of terms that have to be summed. So this is something that uh, uh, that is not contemplated by uh, Greek geometers. It is not classic. It is uh, um, bold and innovative. And um, in the 1670s Newton began to think about himself as a mathematical author as an heir of the ancients, as a proponent of a kind of mathematics that could not give rise to disputes. But this is not the whole story. There is also another characteristic of Newton's youthful mathematical discoveries that is against this idea of being um, a mathematician who um, inscribes himself into uh, a tradition that dates back to the Greeks. And this is, of course, the concept of infinitesimal that Newton called moments. Uh, infinitesimals are very strange things. You have, uh, for instance, a finite segment. You add an infinitesimal segment to it and the two segments have the same length. So infinitesimals are weird mathematical objects and uh, I believe uh, that uh, Newton for a whole variety of reasons that have to do with uh, his philosophical agenda began to conceive of his youthful discoveries as heuristic methods uh, that can be used in the art of discovery but uh, uh, that cannot be considered uh, the kind of mathematics uh, that uh, he wanted to associate with his image of a natural philosopher who produces results that are beyond dispute.